Today I'm going to be talking about the objectification in sports media that influences on a future women's sporting event. So to start, we have the coverage of female sports is significantly lower than their male counterparts. Women are often portrayed to show emphasis on their femininity and their heterosexuality. Females are often placed in sexual poses rather than their sports-related movements when it comes to advertisement photos. And again, we see the 2016 Olympics notes multiple instances for sexist language descriptions and depictions of women. Sexist language is when it allows for privilege of one sex over the other, so the use of feminine versus masculine nouns and pronouns. Objectification theory was used throughout this research, which advances that girls and women are often victims of sexual objectification. In Western society, we scrutinize women's bodies, focusing more on the appearance than the function of their bodies. And female athletes often celebrated on their attractiveness rather than their accomplishments. Women's events also are perceived to be less exciting due to production quality, and this could be due to decreased camera angles and cut rates, as well as just overall production. The literature review continued shows that there has been an overall decline since 2004 of women's sports coverage. 100% of the top sports news stories start with male sports topics of some kind. And with the 2016 Olympics, distinct gender differences in the type of coverage was very apparent throughout the entire games. They see that women have non-contact sports and men were shown for their contact sports. So for women, it was mostly swimming and dive and uh, uh, volleyball. And then for men, it was mostly like men's soccer and other contact sports that they had. This also leads to masculine versus feminine representation of the athletes. The games represent or game recaps focused a lot on their on females looks and sexuality while men uh, was more focused on their power and domination and we see that there is an exponential focus on traditional heterosexual feminine stereotypes are most likely to get covered with women versus if they don't necessarily fit those norms. Sexist language is also often used to discourage women specifically. This is learned at an early age and is used in many different variations. It's mostly used from a dominant to subordinate perspective, meaning that the masculine version of talking is used to be subordinate to women. Um, we see that it is aimed at diminishing and trivializing women in general in sports play. Just a couple of examples of these are when... We have sports names that are called the Lady Rams instead of just the Rams, or they use the nouns and pronouns like girls and gals. They talk more about their physical markers, such as their appearance. Male terms are often used within this, such as mankind versus all of kind, and they also use the first names instead of just their first names instead of their full names or using their last names like they would if they were a male athlete. So the research questions that were proposed here were, does the use of sexist language and sexist imagery in game production article affect the event expectations or viewership intentions of potential consumers? And then they did a sub-question of looking at the relationship between the, two, between the genders. The second question is, does the previous viewership of a similar women's sporting event affect the relationship between the use of sexist language and sexist imagery? in a game production article and a consumer's event expectations or viewership intentions. Again, they also looked for any differences between the gender of the consumer as well. The methods that we have, they presented four different pictures, two of which were controlled that had no sexist language or imagery. Here they used the athlete's full names, they didn't have any sexist language, and they used an image of the athlete doing athletic movements. One picture, one advertisement specifically used the three sexist language practices. So they used the word girl and gal, and they omitted the last name of the players. The two players that they noted in this were Carly Lloyd and, Morgan, and Alex Morgan of the U.S. Women's National Soccer Team back in 2016 during the Rio Olympics. The last picture... It used both sexist language and imagery, showed Alex Morgan with images of her off the field, partially naked and in a sexualized pose. The second image then was also used 
with her hair down in a ball gown and makeup. Obviously, neither of these are poses that she would be doing actually on the field and don't show her athletic movements. A survey was used and this was passed out four weeks before the first match. The participants that were used were 225 individuals, 94 of which were men, 131 of which were women, age ranges from 18 to 74. The demographics of them were white, black, Hispanic, Latino, Asian, and two unidentified. They were all U.S. residents that represented all four major regions of the country as well. So instruments and data analysis, the future behavior intention scale was used here, and they used a one three item scale measuring event expectations, a two item scale measuring viewership intentions, all of which had a seven point Likert scale, which was used. Random assignment to the event promotions was also used. Manipulation checks were used, so to check for any bias. For the data analysis, they used MANOVA, the means, standard deviation, and post hoc testing to show any differences between genders. The results show that with research question one, there was no significant difference in viewership intentions when looked at overall. Event promotions with both sexist language and imagery did, however, result in significantly lower event expectations. Female participation, female participants indicated a higher overall event expectation as well. For research question two, we see that regardless of gender, previous viewership indicated higher event expectations and viewership intentions. There was significant interaction between gender and previous viewership. Overall, females had a higher viewership expectation and intentions than men did. The discussion here now points to that sexist language alone does not appear to influence perception on women's sports. This could be due to the fact that the tradition of this language is so deeply ingrained into our language that we don't always recognize it or realize when the language is being used. Sexist language alone is not enough to alter the perception, but if you add sexist imagery, then it is. Objectification of female athletes may not serve as a marketing value, and sexist imagery did actually result in lower expectations and viewership intentions, and it could be assumed that the level of play would not be very high due to this imagery, so in turn you're actually hurting yourself when in regards to marketing. Lastly, we show that previous viewership did overshadow objectification, meaning that if they did view a match prior, they were more likely to view it again regardless of objectification um, for the women. Somehow this makes women's sports less attractive to viewers though. And to counteract this, we could increase the amount of broadcasts of women's sports so that way we don't have the objectification and they are more likely to view women's sports next. The limitations that we see within this are that they only used American consumers, so it's difficult to put this on a global scale, and the language that was used within the context of the advertisement could have been considered too sexist, as they definitely used as much sexist language as they could to try and put an emphasis on their point. In conclusion, we see that currently language and images do reinforce female subordinate positions within the sports industry. The findings serve as a guide to sports communication professionals and future marketing campaigns, um, and it shows that female athletes should be portrayed in their ascribed environment, so that way sexualization of female athletes may serve as no benefit to the viewership. So if you want the best marketing campaign possible, according to this research, it is shown that you should use their full name in athletic positions and omit any sort of sexist language and or imagery. And this is my reference.